Sir, <clears throat> I rise to speak on a discussion that is entitled India's Glorious Space Journey Marked by Successful Soft Landing of Chandrayaan 3. Sir, listening to the Leader of the House, it appeared as if this glorious space journey started only in 2014. Yes. And that the sutradhar of this space journey is the Prime Minister. I want to take this occasion, sir, to revisit this glorious space journey, not to make political debating points, but to pay tribute to a remarkable generation of Indian scientists and technologists who could have worked anywhere in the world, who could have worked anywhere in the world, but chose to come back to India in the 1950s and 1960s. Sir, I have before me a government order issued on the 22nd of February, 1962. This is the 22nd of February, 1962, an office order issued by the government of India, which reads that the Union government has set up the Indian National Committee for Space Research. The committee is set up on the recommendations of the Scientific Advisory Committee to the Cabinet will advise the government on the promotion of research in an exploration of space and its utilization of peaceful purposes. India's glorious space journey began on the 22nd of February 1962, which was marked by the establishment of the Indian National Committee on Space Research. There were two people who were responsible for getting this Incospar set up. Both were the great scientists of India. One was Homi Baba, who was then the chairman of the scientific advisory to the cab committee to the cabinet. And the second was Vikram Sarabhai, a great name, a man who had a vision for Indian space. And I expected the honorable leader of the house at least to make a passing mention of Vikram Sarabhai. Sir, Sir, I'm not yielding. I'm not yielding. I'm not yielding. Please. Sir, it was two weeks, it was two weeks before Incospar was set up that the Prime Minister of India, the then Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, went to Ahmedabad to visit the physical research laboratory that was created by Vikram Sarabhai way back in 1947. Sir, this is a photograph I have of Pandit Nehru with Vikram Sarabhai and E.V. Chitnis in the old parliament house. You could have seen this photograph, but in this new parliament house, we need a telescope to see each other. I don't have a telescope, sir, but you can take me for my word. This is a photograph of the Prime Minister of India with Vikram Sarabhai and Professor E.V. Chitnis, who is 97 years old and is still alive. He is one of the key figures in this space journey. And in fact, Professor Chitnis's greatest contribution to our space program was the recruitment of a young engineer from the Madras Institute of Technology named APJ Abdul Kalam. Sir, after, after the establishment of INCOSPAR, on the 22nd of February, 1962, the second milestone in this glorious space journey was on the 21st of November, 1963, when India launched its sounder rocket from Thumba near Trivandrum. This was called TURLS, the Thumba Equatorial Research Launching Station. This was the first sounding rocket launched way back on the 21st of November, 1963. And this was made possible because of Vikram Sarabhai, because of H.G.K. Murthy, because of Abdul Kalam, because of E.V. Chitnis, and a large number of scientists and technologists. So ISRO was created on the 15th of August, 1969. This was when Vikram Sarabhai created the Indian Space Research Organization to give a 
developmental boost to the Indian space program. So the Indian space program is the only program in the world that has not come out of the military sector. It has been a civilian program all through. The Indian space program is the only program to have a developmental thrust. The use of space for remote sensing, the use of space for rural development, the use of space for communication, for weather forecasting. This is being the hallmark of India's space program going back to the creation of ISRO on the 15th of August, 1969. So, on the 25th of December, 1971, unfortunately, Vikram Sarabhai passed away very suddenly at the young age of 52. He died of a heart attack in Kovalam Beach near Trivandrum. The Indian space program was then faced with a huge crisis. It had lost its karta data. It had lost its nirmata. It had lost its visionary. Vikram Sarabhai, who had lived and dreamt of India as a space power. It was then that the then Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, took what I consider to be the most important step that has made India the space power that we are all proud of today. So she wrote a letter to an Indian scientist who was then taking a sabbatical at the famous California Institute of Technology in Pasadena in California. The name of the scientist is Satish Dhaman. And it is in his honor that our launch center in Sri Harikota is called the Satish Dhaman Launch Center. So Indira Gandhi wrote a letter on the 7th of January, 1972. And I wish to quote a few lines from this letter. This is the Prime Minister of India writing, Dear Dr. Dhawan, Vikram's sudden and tragic death has deprived our entire space research program of leadership. You are aware of the heavy investment we have made in it. The 10-year profile the 10-year profile of the development of space shows the extent of our commitment. We cannot afford to allow the entire organization to crumble. I should like you to accept the stewardship of our space program, which I am proposing to separate from the Atomic Energy Commission. Till 1972, space and atomic energy were together. But it is in 1972 that space gets separated from the Atomic Energy Commission. It will be for you to structure this new organization. Please let me know urgently when I may expect you to return and what arrangements you would like us to make for the interim period. I hope you will respond to an emergency situation in a sensitive area of national importance. This is a letter written by the Prime Minister of India to a scientist taking a sabbatical in California, who was then the director of the Indian Institute of Science, Satish Dhawan. Sir, so Satish Dhawan immediately accepted the offer of the Prime Minister. He put some conditions that he would like ISRO to be headquartered in Bangalore. He would not, he would not like to be posted in New Delhi, that he would like to continue as the director of the Indian Institute of Science and he would like full freedom to run ISRO the way it should be run. The Prime Minister of India exceed, accepted and acceded to all these conditions. So when he came back to India, when he took over as chairman of ISRO, her secretary, Mr. P. N. Haksa, sent Mrs. Gandhi a note. And I was fortunate enough to get a copy of this note in the archives. And Mr. Huxer wrote on the 25th of May, 1972, to the Prime Minister, Dr. Satish Dhawan is an extremely sensitive human being. Hitherto, he has led a relatively cloistered life, devoting himself to the pursuit of his own scientific speciality in the field of aerodynamics. I know he has many doubts and hesitations 
in accepting the responsibility of heading our space organization. And if he were to opt out of it, we literally have no one at present as the second best choice. It is therefore of vital importance that our Prime Minister should express in her own way her appreciation of the high sense of duty which has led Dr. Dhawan to respond to the PM's call to him. It is equally necessary to say that Dr. Dhawan will continue to receive her personal support in sorting out any problems he may run up against any administrative and other fields, and that Dr. Dhawan should not hesitate in coming to the Prime Minister and that he will always have direct access. So it is from this day onwards that Prime Ministers of India have held direct control of the Department of Space. It is from this day onwards that the Chairman of ISRO, the Chairman of the Space Commission, the Secretary Department of Space, three roles combined in one individual, have only reported to the Prime Minister and nobody else. So the glorious space journey that the Leader of the House wants us to believe started in 2014. The first milestone was on the 22nd of February 1962. The glorious journey that the Leader of the House wants us to believe started in 2014, had its second milestone on the 15th of August 1969 with the creation of ISRO. The glorious journey that the Leader of the House wants us to believe begins in 2014, had its third milestone in 1972, July, when Satish Dhawan became the chairman of ISRO. Sir, the success of Chandrayaan-3 is based on the competencies, the capabilities, the capacities that have been created over a 60-year period. We launched satellites, but we first launched satellites on Soviet rockets. We did not have a satellite launch vehicle. In July of 1979, our first SLV launch failed. Dr. Kalam was in tears. So Dr. Satish Dhawan said, I am your leader. I will take responsibility for the failure. You sit at the back. That is leadership. In July, August of 1980, the SLV-3 succeeded. Dr. Dhawan said to Kalam, Kalam, you take credit for this. I will sit at the back. This is leadership. Leadership is not taking credit when things are going good and run away when the things are going bad. Leadership is when you have the courage to take the responsibility for things that are going wrong as much as you take credit when things are going right. So this is the milestones of a successful journey, sir. There have been many scientists, and I want to recall, I have mentioned Homi Baba, I have mentioned Vikram Sarabhai, I've mentioned Abdul Kalam. There's a great scientist of India who is forgotten today. He is the only scientist who has worked and contributed for our nuclear program as well as for our space program. And if you go to the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in Tiruvarantupuram, you will see, you will see a statue of him uh, in the space uh, organization headquarters. His name is Brahma Prakash. He's probably one of the greatest metallurgists that India has produced. And he made a huge difference to our space program and to our atomic energy program. We have had a succession of chairmen. We had Satish Dhawan, U. R. Rao, Madhavan Nair, Kasturi Rangan, Radha Krishnan, Shivan, and now, of course, we have Somnath. Each of them have made contributions because the political leadership has given them the freedom to make those contributions. Sir, I also want to say that India's space program has always had a developmental orientation. It has always been space for development, space for communication, space for rural development, space for weather forecasting, space for identifying sources of water. Indian scientists and technologists 
have never seen India's space program as a symbol of Indian national nationalism. It has always been seen in a developmental perspective. It has always been seen as an instrument of fulfilling develop, developmental aspirations. And that's why we had INSAT, the Indian National Communication Satellite. And it is because of INSAT that we improved our weather forecasting. We located sources of water. We created new maps. We created platforms like Bhuvan. So while it is natural for all of us to take pride, I would like to urge all of us to please look at our space program fundamentally as an instrument of development and not as an instrument of muscular nationalism. This has been the hallmark of India's space program for the last 60 years. And let it be in that spirit if, with which it was founded by our scientists and technologists. So, I am entirely in agreement with the Prime Minister when he said yesterday that the Chandrayaan-3 achievement creates a new excitement for science. But sir, what is the point creating an excitement of science when you're removing Darwin's theory of evolution from textbooks? What is the, what is the importance of creating excitement of science when you reject Newton, you reject Einstein, you think all knowledge was available to India 2,000 years ago? Sir, that is not a scientific temper. Scientific temper is the spirit of inquiry, is a spirit of questioning. We have had glorious tradition. We have had glorious tradition in mathematics. We have had a glorious tradition in metallurgy. We have a glorious tradition in astronomy. But, sir, let us take pride in our past, but let us not think that all of modern science, all of modern technology was known to us 2,000 years ago. We have to move with the times. That is the scientific temper. That is the scientific spirit. If you reject science, if you do not give your scientific institutions freedom, if you do not allow scientific endeavor to flourish in a spirit of professionalism, you can have all the Chandrayans of the world, but it is not going to make a difference to the minds of the young. So we have to create a scientific spirit, the spirit of questioning, the spirit of inquiry, the spirit of doubt. That is the spirit of science, which I hope will be created by this excitement. So, along with Chandrayaan-3, let us not forget Chandrayaan-1. Chandrayaan-1 was launched in 2008. And I have no hesitation in saying that the first announcement of Chandrayaan was by Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee on the 15th of August in 2003. After 2003, you had Chandrayaan-1 in 2008, you had Chandrayaan-2 in 2019, and you have Chandrayaan-3 in 2023. What does it mean? It means there is continuity in governance. If a prime minister refuses to acknowledge continuity in governance, if a prime minister believes that the world has started only when I became prime minister, if a prime minister believes that Indian science has become great, that the Indian space program has become great only when I became prime minister, yeah. sir, I, I beg to differ. Let us take, along with Chandrayaan-1, Aditya, Aditya L1, which was also a great success. We have not mentioned it in your resolution. But this Aditya L1, the solar laboratory, which was launched one week after uh, yeah, Chandrayaan-3. So when did Aditya-1 start? Aditya-1 started in the year 2006. It took 17 years for Aditya level L1. Sir. Sir, can I finish? 
so it took 17 years for Aditya L1 to be conceived, to be planned, to be executed, and to be lodged. The Honorable Leader of the House said, we are now making things in India. So we have always been making things in India. Larson and Tubro, Valchand Nagar Industries. There are so many Indian companies I can think of which have been associated with the Indian space program going back to the 70s. To say that suddenly out of 2014, we have started making things for our space program is a complete distortion of facts. In fact, the Indian space program has always been based on creative partnerships with the Indian private sector and Indian public sector. Our nuclear reactors are made in India. Our rockets are made in India. Our launchers are made in India. Our satellites are made in India. And they were being made in India before 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, I will, I don't know what your intention is, whether you want to pass a resolution at the end of the discussution. But if you do want to pass, sir, let me finish, sir. If you do want to pass, please acknowledge that the capabilities, competencies, and capacities that have resulted in Chandrayaan 3's success are the results of investments made over the last 60 years. These are based on contributions of successive prime ministers. These are based on contributions of a large number of Indian scientists, large number of Indian technologists, many of whom we don't even know of, many of whom we don't even acknowledge. But I think today is the day when we should salute our Indian scientific community, our Indian technological community. So it is the Indian scientists and Indian technologists who gave India the Green Revolution in the 1970s. It is Indian scientists and Indian technologists who gave India the White Revolution in the 1970s. It is Indian scientists and Indian technologists which have created our missile development program, the Agnis and the Prithvis and the Nads. And it is Indian scientists and Indian technologists who have given our space program the profile in the world that it has today. And I want to say one thing about these scientists and engineers, sir. So all the newspaper headlines, all our talk is based on our elite institutions of learning. I happen to come from one of them. But I have no hesitation in saying that the contributions in this space program have come from men and women who are graduates of government engineering colleges, of lesser known engineering colleges. They are not from IITs. They're not from IIMs. But they are from colleges in Kollam, colleges in Trivandrum, colleges in Surat, colleges in Baroda, colleges in Pune, colleges in Bhopal, in Rajasthan, colleges in Indore, colleges in Jaipur. This is what colleges in Chennai. Sir, this is the strength of Indian science. The strength of Indian science doesn't come from five institutes or 10 institutes or 15 institutes. The strength of Indian science comes from a very large population of engineering institutions, which we have to nurture, which we have to upgrade, which we have to recognize, and which we must give full freedom for them to operate. So, sir, I associate myself with the sentiments of the leader of the house, who has not heard whatever I have said, because he's been busy in conversation with the, uh, the person next to him throughout. He has, he has been busy he has in conversation now. throughout. No, no. Take a Sir. Second. Jairam, now you have made a reflection. Let him react. Leader of, he has. And, and before that, Jairam was on right track. Jairam, you were on right track. But when I took the seat, you got little political. What is this? From science, you traveled to politics. Sir. Sir, I had, I had, uh, I had caught up in between also. 
Unfortunately, Jairam thought. Honorable Chairman, sir. You are on political lines. Sir, it's our old relationship, sir. It's our old relationship. And this is a big... इन्होंने कुछ साल पहले आइंस्टीन और न्यूटन को कंफ्यूज भी कर दिया था। पुराना रिश्ता। उसको याद नहीं दिलाऊंगा उनको। पुराना रिश्ता। पर आज उनसे भाषण सुनना पड़ा, प्रवचन सुनना पड़ा। पुराना रिश्ता। हमारे स्पेस प्रोग्राम का क्या क्या उपलब्धियां हैं? पुराना रिश्ता और पुराना घाव मीठा दर्द देता है। the past members of ISRO family, the present members of ISRO family, we congratulate our Indian scientists, we congratulate our Indian technologists. I am sure that many more achievements are there in the years to come. But sir, I will only end by pleading that we need to give our scientific and technological institutions full freedom. We need to give our scientific and technological institutions full independence and professionalism. And we need to free our scientific and technological institutions of any political patronage and political interference and political intervention. So let us, uh, let us on that thought, let us on that thought acknowledge the glorious space journey that we have had. And let us also acknowledge the milestones that we have gone through, even though the Prime Minister and the Leader of the House may choose to airbrush them away from history. They are a fact of life. They cannot be erased from history. They are very much part of our space journey. They, I thought that it is important for me to remind the House where we have come from the journey that we have taken, the achievements that we have had, the people who have contributed, rather than fall victim to this new impression that has been created, that this entire accomplishment of Chandrayaan 3 and Aditya L1 is the result of only one individual. Thank you, sir. Siri. Siri. जवार